students, greetings from a very beautifully sunny New Zealand this afternoon. Today I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial um, on the very beautiful setting of Ave Maria by Schubert. We'll be going through where to breathe, how to breathe, um, where, which are the important words, so we'll talk a lot about the text. Um, the vowel sounds that we need to make, um, dynamics, um, all those things that we need to make a performance and then at the end um, you'll have the opportunity to sing along. So I'll be going through and giving you various singing tips along the way, how to um, make the music come alive off the page. It would be great if you had a copy of the sheet music, it's very widely available free of charge so if you search on free PDF Schubert Ave Maria Latin is a good thing to put in there, I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, and if you have a copy in front of you then that means you also have the text, the lyrics on there and you can mark in where you're going to be taking breaths, um, where fits best with the music and the meaning of the text. So a little bit about the history, um, Schubert wrote this song in 1825 and it was an originally, um, the poem that inspired him was a poem by Walter Scott, so it's actually a poem in English. And the song then was translated, the, the lyrics were translated into German. Um, and the song is actually originally called Ellen's Song because it is about Ellen Douglas who was living in Scotland in exile with her father because her father refused to join up and fight in the army in the rebellion against King James. Um, so she's living in a cave with her father, um, hiding, you know, in mortal danger, um, and she prays to the Virgin Mary for salvation, for help, um, and then so, so the song came into being as a German song, German lead by Schubert, and then some Latin words, the, the prayer Ave Maria was um, put to the same tune. Um, so we'll start with um, the Latin text. So the first thing I want to do is just let you know what those Latin vowels are going to be. So we're going to keep them all open. A, E, I, O, U, so the letter A, is going to always be pronounced A, A, um, I'm thinking A, V, and the letter E therefore is E, and the letter I is an E sound, Grazia, um, which ones haven't we done? The letter O comes up in Ora later on, O is like orange or operation, and the letter U is an U and that comes in peccatoribus. And so there are vowels, A, E, E, O, U. Now the first thing I advise my students to do is to say the text, inserting the word breath where you think you're going to take a breath. The best places for a breath are where there is some punctuation in the text. So we're going to do Ave Maria, breath, grazia plena, breath, Maria grazia plena, breath, Maria grazia plena, breath, ave, comma, so you're going to grab a breath, ave dominus, breath, dominus tecum, breath, benedicta tu in mulieribus, breath, et benedictus, breath, et benedictus fructus ventris, breath, ventris tui, breath if you need it, Jesus, Ave Maria. So that's our first talk through, inserting the breaths where we're going to take them. And now we'll start singing, now. Ah, first thing, translation. You always need to know what your text is about. If you don't know what your text is about, you can't really bring the full meaning to the words that you're singing. So, Hail Mary, Ave Maria, full of grace, gratia plena. Um, Maria, gratia plena, that repeats. Ave, Ave Dominus, hail the Lord who is with thee. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, bus, blessed art thou among women. 
um, et benedictus, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, et benedictus fructus ventris, ventris tui, Jesus, Jesus. Ave Maria. That's the first verse. So we're going to start with the opening. Now I'm just keeping a, a pulse of quavers. One, two, three. phrase I think we want several things we want mezzo forte so quite loud it's a prayer but it's not weak and we don't want it to sound weak we want it to sound a little bit stronger and more confident at the opening you're calling for the blessed mother um, of Jesus to help you so Ave Maria now I think what we want to do is avoid a glottal stop so we want a smooth onset rather than ah, which is actually quite bad for your vocal cords if it's done too much. So I'd like a smooth onset there. Ave Maria. And then I think we want a nice messa di voce on the long note, the re of ria. So getting louder and then coming away. So that's one that you might want to look at one of my other videos to practice the Mesa di Voce. It's also called a hairpin where we get louder and then diminuendo on one note. So with the nice hairpin as well, soft onset, three, four. So nice open breath, open throat, soft palate raised. Grazia plena. Now we've got a little ornament in there, which you won't know unless you have the music in front of you. It's a, a little additional couple of notes that are printed very, very small. And they're not really part of the main melody, um, but they are an ornament that is generally added into the um, to the vocal line. Grazia plena. So the ornament is the before sia. So just keep the nice a vowel from gra for the ornament. Grazia plena. So we're going to put those two phrases together. back to our opening dynamic of mezzo forte there so quite loud still in a moment we're going to do a big crescendo so it's still it's quite loud not too loud at this point then the next phrase we're going to crescendo all the way through this phrase because now you're really calling on Maria Maria grazia plena here we go one two tapering off for plena. Let's just try that again. Maria grazia plena. So we've come back to about mezzo forte for the next phrase. So we had forte for Maria grazia growing possibly even to fortissimo. Quite loud, very loud actually. And then back to So our opening dynamic of mezzo forte there. And then repeated text. Maria grazia plena. Keep that all nice and mezzo forte. And then actually we'll do those two phrases together. So this is 
after Grazia Plena, this is Maria Grazia. Take a good breath there because um, the next phrase isn't hugely long. We've got Ave, Ave Dominus domin, Dominus Tecum. So you're going to actually grab a little breath between the two Aves. So it's going to sound like this. Ave, Ave Dominus, Dominus Tecum. So just to be clear, there's a comma after the first Ave, so you're going to take a breath there. So, Ave, breath, Ave Dominus. So going through the Ave Dominus, hail um, Lord who is um, with thee. Breath, Dominus Tecum. And we're going to do our little diminuendo there on the last Dominus Tecum. I'm just going to do all of that page again. It's my page on my copy. So this is from Maria Grazia Plena. So you're going to have to move your mouth for all that diction um, and keeping the vowels nice and open. The rhythm is benedicta tu in mulieribus. Just say that with me. Benedicta tu in mulieribus. And sung. Benedicta tu in mulieribus. And I think we're going to go to MP for this. And just because this is a new sort of, um, a new idea, I suppose, but also a new, um, a new theme almost. It's a different rhythmic pattern. And I think it benefits from much more of a sense of stretched out legato line. Um, so really making the vowels nice and long and stretched out. Benedicta tu in mulieribus et benedictus. And we're going to do a crescendo through that phrase et benedictus. Et at the end so keep it mezzo piano until we get to the end because now we're building for the main climax of the song now again you've got one of those little ornaments in there on the fructus shouldn't interfere with the the main notes of the phrase it's just a little decorative ornament I'm going to go from I'm going to go from 
benedictatu in mulieribus. Benedictatu in mulieribus. Et benedictus. Et benedictus fructus ventris. Ventris tu. So you can see the shape getting um, louder for the fructus ventris, the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Ventris tui, Jesus. Coming smaller on that. And then we reiterate the call to the Mother Mary. nice mesa di voce as well so that we are growing the sound and then bringing it back in to shape the phrase. I am going to sing that whole verse I think and I'll try and call out some instructions as well although it's hard to call out and sing at the same time I've discovered but it doesn't stop me trying. Here we go. Verse one, mezzo forte, nice smooth onset. Oh, I didn't say, I should have said this earlier. If you're a gentleman, you probably want to sing this the octave down. Now I've chosen G major, the original key is B flat, um, which is a little bit higher than the key that I'm singing today. The reason I chose G major is that it is a slightly more accessible key for the majority of voices. So if you want to sing it down the octave, that's perfectly okay. So you'd be starting there and that will be doable for the majority of male voices. And nice smooth off onset. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Maria gratia. Piano, Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus, et benedictus fructus ventris, ventris tu. the shape I have my pages in the wrong order that's the shape of the first verse the second verse has a slightly different shape mostly because um, not because musically it changes it doesn't change music musically but the words and where the punctuation is does change in this verse so go back to um, talking your words through and inserting the word breath where the punctuation is, where you think you're going to breathe. So it starts the same, Ave Maria, breath, and there's a rest there anyway, so that's an obvious place to breathe. Mater Dei, breath, ora pro nobis peccatoribus. So ora pro nobis peccatoribus is all in one breath. 
so you'll take your breath after um, toribus and then ora ora pro nobis so after the first ora you're going to take a breath and this is where it differs from the first verse and then ora pro nobis in one breath then a breath ora breath again ora pro nobis peccatoribus so that's our really long phrase so you've got ora breath ora pro nobis peccatoribus so the text here is ave maria hell mary again Mater Dei, Mother of God, um, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, pray for us sinners. Um, and then that repeats, ora, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis, at the hour of our death. That's all one phrase, nunc et in ora mortis, breath, in ora mortis nostre, in ora mortis, mortis nostre. So there's your breath in that penultimate phrase or almost penultimate phrase, pre-penultimate phrase. Um, you've got two mortises together with a comma in between them. So take the breath there, in ora mortis, mortis nostre, in ora mortis nostre. And then it finishes with the call to, to the um, Mother Mary again, Ave Maria. So I'll make sure I have my pages in the right order this time, hopefully. I think our opening dynamic should be the same as the first time around. So we're going to go for quite loud and we're going to shape the first phrase the same way that we did um, in the first verse. So with the Mesa di Voce, the hairpin. So. So the ornament is there again. Ma is the ornament. Te de breath. Ora pro nobis peccatoribus. Now there's an extra little tiny note in there because you have to fit an extra syllable in in this verse. Um, so the re is a little extra note added in just so that you can fit the word in properly. And loud, I'm growing through this phrase. Ora pro nobis peccatoribus. Ora, ora pro nobis. And you'll see that I took the breath after the ora ora pro nobis. I'm just going to do that page again from where we first sing ora. So, two, three. Ora pro nobis peccatoribus. Ora, ora pro nobis. So that's our super long phrase in this song, just because of the way the text works. Ora, breath, ora, pro nobis peccatoribus, all in one breath. Let's just go from the oras again. This verse is slightly more complicated possibly than the first verse, just because of those breathing patterns.
So this is the real crux of the song. At the hour of our death, this is the, um, the reason we're talking to Mary. We want her protection. Um, so this is, I mean, it's all important text, of course it is. But nunc et in ora the hour mortis, mortis is, is death. So mortis is a really, really important word. So if you can lean on mortis and make the whole phrase drive towards that word. happens in the busiest part of the phrase musically and it happens before in the first verse where we do that twiddly little up and down ornament now in the second verse I choose not to do the ornament because I actually want to point the comma between the words mortis mortis repeated so to do that take a breath there and fit that ornament in I find just a little bit too um too busy, too clunky, not really in keeping with the sense of calm and line in the song. So I ditch the ornament in favour of beautiful line and just taking a relaxed breath between the two repetitions of the word mortis. So I'll just do that again. Um, where will I go from? Et benedictus, wrong words, I'm singing the first verse. In I'm just going to just tell you why I did some of the things that I did there. I've explained about the breath in the middle of the mortis mortis section and then I feel we repeat that text again in ora mortis nostre. We've had our big climax I think at the um, uh, mortis mortis nostre then I think the contrast here needs to be um, cemented with a piano, quiet, quiet, quiet. In ora mortis nostre. And then quiet. closing is much more personal for me. Um, I'll do a little Messa di Voce on the long Ri of Ria but not a huge one. Um, I just feel that it's much more intimate, and much more personal and much more prayerful if that one isn't too loud. It's the closing of the song and I think the piano play out or orchestra if you're lucky enough to have your own orchestra um, lends itself beautifully to a real quiet finish. Um, so that is the whole song. I'm just going to get all my pages in order. Um, you might notice that I'm rolling some of the R's or flicking them. Now I know a lot of you can't roll an R and that's absolutely fine. You can say Maria without a roll. If you can do a flick, a r, 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 just one, Maria is absolutely fine. And if you can do a tiny little roll, Maria, that's even better. But it really doesn't matter. So, just to um, put everything in a nutshell, I suppose. Know your text. 
speak your text and insert the word breath where you're going to take a breath. Be driven by the punctuation. That's always a good place to start when you're working out where to take a breath in a song. Open vowels for Latin, A, E, I, O, U. Speaking the text, inserting the word breath, we've said that. Know what your translation is. Work out what the important words are. That's why you need to know your translation. So for example, um, mortis is an important word. We've discussed that. Maria is an important word. Ave Maria is an important word. Um, dynamics. So the dynamics are your... Hmm, they're both driven by the way the music sounds, but they're also driven by your response to the music and where you feel it naturally wants to get louder and get quieter. Music always has to have ebb and flow. So your dynamics are really, really important parts of shaping the music. Um, gents, I think I said, or anybody with a low voice, not just gents, um, contraltos probably would um, happily sing this the octave down. Um, I think that's it. I think I'm going to sing the whole song now, both verses. Feel free at this point to join in and see if you can um, implement all the things that we've talked about or some of the things that we've talked about. So here we go. <coughs> verses while well, there's the um, musical interlude and then verse two. Or 
So that's my version of Schubert's beautiful Ave Maria, both verses to the Latin text. I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and found it helpful. It's a beautiful song, great solo for in church on Sunday if you're lucky enough to be asked. I hope you um, feel free to share um, anything that I put on my YouTube channel with anybody else who you know has a love of singing and comment because I love chatting about singing with you guys and I look forward to seeing you next time for the next tutorial. Bye.